this video we're going to look at calculating uh, covariances and correlations from a sample of data. So our data is contained in the black line box here. We have a variable, uh, a random variable x and we have a sample of nine observations of x on x and nine observations on y and our task is to calculate the uh, covariance and then the correlation of these uh, two uh, random variables. First thing to notice is that I've drawn a scatter diagram of the two variables with x on the horizontal axis and y on the vertical axis. It seems to show a negative relationship between the two uh, random variables and we'll see whether that is confirmed when we work out the covariance. Now the formula for the covariance is given in this equation here. Covariance between the random variables x and y is 1 divided by the sample size less 1 times the sum across the whole sample of the difference uh, of each individual x from its mean times the difference between each individual y from its mean. So it measures whether uh, when the x values are, say, above the mean, whether it is true that their y values are above or below the mean. Now this uh, requires um, quite a lengthy calculation and you can actually calculate the equivalent uh, and identically equal statistic using the formula at the bottom here which just requires the sum of the x's times the uh, the y's less n the sample size times the mean of x times the mean of y so we'll apply this uh, this formula so let's look at our uh, uh, sample again and here what we've got is the average value so that is equates to the mean or average with the bar in the symbols uh, sorry in the equations here we've also calculated the variances now notice that I'm using the var dot s formula which means the sample variance which means that the divisor is n minus 1 if I'd been calculating the population variance the divisor would be n but we're dealing with a sample here so we use the appropriate Excel function to calculate the variance of the sample. Now these two formula here for the mean and the variance are just carried across to calculate uh, uh, these same statistics for the random variable y. So we have them for the random variable x and the random variable y. In this uh, cell here, I've just got the count. I'm being a bit lazy. I've just got to Excel to count how many um, observations there are in the sample. And that is the number 9, which is equal to our n in the formula. Finally, I've got um, a more complex uh, uh, function here, sum product, which calculates the first value of x times the first value of y and adds that to the second value of x times the second value of y and so on. Calculates what's called the sum product of um, the uh, entire sample uh, because it's defined over C3 to C11 which is the first column then multiplied by D3, D11 here. So in fact what that's calculating is the sum of xi, yi's. So we're now in a position that we can calculate this formula uh, here and it's uh, going to be done in the cell. So we take the contents of cell C17 which is the sum product term. We subtract from that D17 the value of n times the value of C14, the mean of x, times the, the value of D14, the mean of y, and then divide by D13, 
D17, the number in the sample, less 1. So that gives us this formula here, where we've postponed the division by n minus 1 till the end of the formula, but the result is equivalent. So I get a covariance of minus 8.07, which confirms uh, our uh, guess that the covariance would be negative. In other words, when x is above its mean, we can expect y to be below its mean. We're now going to calc the, calculate the correlation coefficient from our, uh, our data. So <clears throat> we're going to apply the formula shown here, which is that the correlation coefficient between the random variables x and y is equal to their covariance divided by the square root of the variance of x times the variance of y. This will be a number that lies between minus 1 and plus 1. If x and y are independent, the value of the correlation coefficient will be 0 because the covariance between x and y will be 0 if the two variables are uh, independent. So let's have a look at, uh, at the calculation. We've just worked out the covariance, so we know that. We've also uh, calculated previously the sample variance for both x and for y. So we have the ingredients to calculate this um, formula quite quickly. So I've done it here. Let me show you how it's, uh, how it's done. Uh, what I've done is I've taken the covariance, which is in cell C19, and then I'm going to uh, well, I'll, I'll just change this slightly so that you see that it's exactly the same. I'm going to take the cells in C15 and D15, multiply them together, and take the square root of that number. Well, the cells in C15 and D15 are the variances of x and then the variance of y. So that's the bottom of this formula. And then we multiply these two together and we take the square root. Square SQRT takes the square root. And that's exactly the same result as you can get directly from Excel by applying what's called the Corel function, which just gives you a correlation coefficient. Notice that the value of the correlation coefficient is minus 0 0.9. The minimum possible value for a correlation coefficient is minus 1. This is very close to that number. That means that this is a strong negative relationship between x and y that, uh, that we've discovered. Now, we could try to see, well, can we weaken that uh, relationship by changing one of the values? So if I change this value here, which is, is um, <coughs> selecting this particular cell here, to let's say 12. That weakens the relationship quite a lot. The correlation coefficient uh, comes down to minus 0 0.4. We can see that um, if we had a number of uh, uh, points like this one here, our relationship would change from being a negative relationship to a positive relationship. Introducing just this one variable uh, observation weakens the negative relationship quite a lot. So that's when you have a small sample, the quite uh, potent effect that uh, a single outlying observation might have.